give the dog the Heinrich Renewa. Do you think the dog's choking? All right. I get really bad, you know, anxiety. If, if there's anything, I'll tell you what I'm really good at. He's breathing. It's all right. You're breathing? He's good. You're not dead? Are you dead? Oh, look, he's dead. <laughs> you okay? I have to give him heart to heart. No, if there's anything to worry about, I will actually worry about it. I'm actually really, really good of thinking up really bad things that could happen. No, they haven't happened, but they could happen. And most people are quite surprised when they hear that about me because they think, as I'm, you know, this comedian, I must be this really easygoing, robust, fun, loving sort of person. But that's not true. I'm nothing like that. I'm uptight, neurotic, you know, catastrophizing controlling, paranoid, freaked out, anxious, fuck up. And I actually realised the other day that I think actually being a comedian, it's perfect. I mean, you actually need that. That actually helps you be a comedian, which is sort of ironic because, you know, I've saved a lot of money. I get paid to be dysfunctional. You know, in a way, going on stage means I use all that terrible stuff about myself and I get paid. Uh, instead of me paying a therapist or cognitive behaviour therapy. <laughs> so, I don't think I get better. I just think I get to use it and to abuse it in a way, I guess. But it, I don't know, I'm having one of my really high anxiety weeks where I'm like waking up at 3am just thinking of everything that could be going wrong. That, I think of everything. Like I can't even, like, I can't watch children running on concrete at the pool. Like, I have to stop other people's children because they could fall, not just my children. It's mainly the kids. Like, I don't really care about dying personally. Like until I had kids, I didn't give a shit about dying. If I die, I die. But now I've got children. I'm going, oh, I can't die because then they'll have to live without me. And if I'm not there, who is going to worry about all the shit that's going to happen to them? Who is going to protect them from this dangerous place, this place full of pointy corners and sharp surfaces and, and poison and chemicals and diseases and Ebola and terrorists and bombs and choking and food poisoning and, and ruptured appendix and rectal cancer. I don't know why I said that. I actually do think, uh, most days I think I've probably got cancer, like some sort of cancer. I was actually thinking the other day, imagine finding, I found out this woman that she actually had rectal cancer, which is a really bad cancer to get. Because it's not like you check. Well, I don't. <laughs> I just went, that would be a really embarrassing way to die. You know, particularly, you know, having to tell people I've got cancer, rectal. <laughs> you know, just if people would laugh when you're not there. But anyway, sorry to anyone who's got rectal cancer. I'm not minimising your cancer. Now I've probably said it. I think now I've said it, I'll probably get it now because I've actually made fun of rectal cancer. And they go, well, Mandy, what an asshole of a thing to do now. You've got rectal cancer, you paranoid woman. So it's, I, I'm, I actually have fear of most things. I'm fear of, of course, of sharks, obviously. Sharks are, uh, so when I'm the woman in the beach going, come in, come in, come in, come in, get away, come in, in, in between. And Rip's really scared of Rip being carried out as a drowning. Drowning with a shark, being hit by a surfboard on the head and having your head cracked open by, I fear that. So um, I'm only happy if the kids are swimming. Like, I think ankles is enough. I think just a bit of froth around the ankles is okay, unless there's some sort of rogue box jellyfish has actually accidentally washed it. It's going to happen, global warming, they're going to come down here. So you've got to be careful. Maybe if they could go in wearing stockings and just stand in the fluff, that would be okay. Uh, that would be, I'm going to put that down and I'm going to actually note that down. That would be a good way of actually going swimming. So I worry about that. I worry about like, you know, cars, obviously kids being hit by cars, riding bikes is always really hard. Like helmet isn't enough. I think you actually need pads and actually protective gear and on the footpath, like ride on the footpath, although you could get hit by a car coming out of a driveway. So I, have to, I don't know what to do about that. Just don't ride a bike, just don't ride a bike. Just stay at home, stay at home on the couch. Uh, I, I, I worry about, you know, balconies. I don't like balconies, I don't like heights. I'm frightened of heights. The thing about heights is, I get a compulsion of throwing myself over. I don't know why. Every time I get to a really high place, the feeling I could just throw myself over is so intense, my legs collapse because I know I'm about to do it. I'm about to throw. I can't go to, I can't go to any waterfalls or anything because I will jump in. Not that I want to because I'm frightened. I have to sit down. I have to actually pull myself along like I've got some sort of paralysis. So I do worry about balconies. I won't let the kids, they're not allowed to lean on the balcony or they can look over, but you have to actually, you make sure they're sort of sitting on a chair and anchored to something like a rope, tying them back to the coffee table or something, just so they don't slip and fall because life is really fragile and things do happen. You know, people say that things don't happen. People say all this stuff, like, I don't like flying. Uh, apart from the fact the other day I was on a plane 
and the guy beside me for two hours farted for the entire time. Just farted continuously, two hours of farting. I thought, thought I was going to have a brain bleed. It was so bad. I was hoping the plane would crash that day because it was so distressing. But I, I do actually, when I get on the plane, I actually make peace with the fact I probably die now, so I don't actually panic. But inside, I close my eyes and I imagine, I imagine my PowerPoint at the funeral to some music and kind of do like a bit of a visualisation. So if I arrive at my destination, I'm happy. And people go, that's ridiculous. You're all at more risk of being killed in a car accident. And I said, I know, my father died in a car accident. Thanks for that. It was really nice. Uh, <laughs> I think when you've actually had... A tragedy when someone in your family close is killed in an accident like that statistics about it won't happen to you because it'll probably happen to someone else doesn't actually make you feel better about controlling danger in the world i'm just terrified of it there's so many things that could happen i just always worrying about oh my god I can't stand it. You can't eat nuts in the house. I don't like nuts. Well, if you eat nuts, you have to sit down and chew them a lot. I won't let children run around eating nuts. I do have a choke. Choking is a big one. don't like choking. Frightens me a little bit. I've seen them, you know, and I actually, I would pre-masticate the food for them if I could, like a bird, but, you know, I mash their food till I rate. Is that too long? I, <laughs> so I'm a little bit anxious, a little bit, you know, um, uptight. And people say you should face your fears. And I say, people should get fucked. I've got no intention of facing my fears. I'm going to stay here and pat the dog and, and try and think of things that could happen to him, bad things that could happen. And then I'll create a plan to make him safe. I'll probably just cover him in cushions. And that way, nothing bad can ever happen to the dog. He'll be OK. See? See how safe you are? See? See how I love you and I keep you safe? See? That's love. It looks after you. Don't you wish I loved you? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Elvis. That was a good boy.